if you don't know what Swiggle is, Swiggle is the SolarWinds query language and it is fantastic and it makes beautiful things in the Orion website. You can also use it um, in the API to do that kind of work. So there's lots of information out, that, out there on that stuff already. And um, I will say that because it's built with SolarWinds in mind, a lot of times your resources and the data that you're gonna be pulling in is gonna be a lot cleaner and a lot prettier if you use the custom Swiggle resources instead of custom SQL resources. Um, and I will also say that the transition to custom Swiggle from custom SQL is not very difficult. And Leon, why might we want to use custom Swiggle? <laughs> so, uh, first of all, like you said, the transition, if you know SQL, SQL isn't going to be much of a lift, but uh, the, the main reason that we tell people is that it's future-proofing your queries. If you go with regular old SQL, and I was a hardcore hair on the knuckles, dragging on the ground SQL <laughs> coder for a long time, because that's all you had, but the problem is that as we develop our products, as we expand things out, we add tables, the schema changes, and therefore yeah. your queries break because we move things around. It's not just that we add a table in space, we actually move data from one place to another. And so your SQL completely breaks down. Whereas Swickle, that's not going to happen. So that's your primary reason for converting things over and converting your brain over to Swickle. Yes, and I will say as someone who used to build things in custom SQL all the time, that exact thing happened to me. And that is why I started to switch to Swickle because I was a part of, I had created a bunch of custom alerts and custom reports that were looking at things. And then we upgraded and that was when the alerts and the reports moved to the web console. And if you didn't know, that also changed on the database backend. So they had new tables and everything was in a different spot and all of those yep. things broke. And so I had to go rebuild them from scratch. So if you can freeze to prove something, why wouldn't you? Exactly. I'll also say that if you want to get started or get a sense of how the schema works under Swickle, the best way to do it is to download the Orion SDK. There's a whole studio there that you can browse through and find your tables and find your views and things. So it's not that hard, really. Yeah, it's not that hard. Um, don't let it intimidate you. Um, if you need to pull data, different data sets together from different tables that aren't tied together, Swiggle is a good way to go. Um, we have lots mm -hmm. of resources out there. There's lots of great content put out there by community members um, that are already using custom Swiggle and do some crazy things. There's some awesome stuff out there <laughs> and uh, it's fantastic. So you should check it out. Um, so once again, we're going to create this new report and I'm going to use the custom table resource, but this time I'm going to use the advanced database queries SQL Swickle selection. And I'm going to leave it on Swickle, but if you do, if you are insisting on SQL because you think that, you know, it's better or, or whatever, I mean, I'm sure that lots of people could have the argument all day. Um, you're welcome to use SQL and you just switch over to, the, to SQL from <laughs> Swickle. So uh, I'm not going to show, I'm not going to get into the details of how I created this query. There's like Leon said, there's lots of resources out there. There's, I'm sure there's other videos on Thwack Tuesday tips or on lab or wherever that we've put out out there on creating custom Swiggle things. So I'm not gonna get into the details of how I created this query. I'm just gonna paste it in here. Um, and we're, we can preview right here to see if it works, which it does. So right now it's pulling in all of these fields. We're gonna rename this. And what this query does, because I need to tell you that, um, what this query does is it is looking for CPU specifically, so it's not foolproof, um, CPU data that is not being updated. Now, why might you care about that? So what I noticed many years ago is that um, SNMP uh, connection does not change your node status. You can lose connectivity to a Windows machine out there or something like that where you're using WMI or if you're using, you know, maybe a new firewall got put in and you're not connecting anymore, but ICMP still gets through. So your status is still getting updated, but you're not getting your statistical data anymore. And because you're not getting that statistical data anymore, you're losing all kinds of monitoring goodness and we don't want that. Now, this is a little bit different now because you have the, the new changes to node status that came out uh, in the 2019.2 release. Um, so when I created this, that did not exist. I will say that. And it has been extremely useful for me to find out when devices stop reporting via SNMP or WMI and then later when they added the agent via the agent. So if we're not, we're not pulling that information, I want to know and I want to go fix it. 
So that's well, what and there's says. still, I think, there's still valid reasons why you would want to get availability, meaning up down from ping, but you obviously want to know when it's not collecting statistics. So there's even though we have the ability now to determine availability using SNMP, which would tell you when SNMP stops, um, there's plenty of perfectly justified reasons why that's not an okay solution in your particular use case. So this report still has uh, you know usable use yeah, to do things. Yes, do all the things. Um, do and, all the things. you know, it's just really an example for you to show what you can do. It does. There's a lot of different joins in here. There's a lot of fields being pulled in from all over the place. Um, so it's really a good example for you if you're going to start getting into it um, of what it's doing. So uh, and what can what kind of functions and things can work. So um, we're going to put that in there and then we're going to create it. We're going to, of course, going to name it. And then we'll go through the all the same rigmarole that we did before of adding columns. Now, when you do custom SQL or custom Swiggle, the columns that are available to you are only going to be the columns that you pulled into your query. So you're not going to have all of the options that you had before with just the dynamic query selection because it's not it's no longer it's no longer tied in the same way. So it's only going to pull what you specifically pull in. So anything you can think of that you might want to see in your report, go ahead and pull it into your select query. Well, and I'm going to say, you know, DIY is DIY. And what that means specifically, if you look down to below, you've got the caption, the node name, but you also had to pull the URL for that because if you want to make that caption clickable, you're going to have to have pulled in the URL along with it. You won't be able to use any other option to bring right. that in. So that's an example of what you'd have to, like why you'd have to do that. Right. And as mentioned, this is advanced. So this is definitely the most advanced thing we're showing you today. I will also point out that we are also pulling in icon. So you can see it's pulling mm -hmm. in image files here. So that we're going to be using that. So uh, I'm not going to go through all the rigmarole that we already went through. I'm just going to jump to our finished report. And again, these are all available to you on the content exchange. Um, to, if you go to our, our final report, you can see we didn't end up using that icon. Why not? Maybe I just didn't feel like pulling it in. Maybe I want to later. You don't know. So what we're doing is these are what they are. This is the collection type. So if we had things that weren't reporting anymore that were SNMP or whatever, then you could come in here and change, you'd see what kind of type of collection it's doing. When was the last time that we got information from it? And what is our status description? So you can see this node status is critical and our CPU load threshold is critical, but the threshold is critical even though it's no longer collecting data. So that's very interesting. Uh, and a way of keeping a clean house, as I like to say, and that's what most of these reports have been about, keeping, keeping your SolarWinds house clean. And I think that's very important for keeping your monitoring data good and clean and effective because nothing irritates people more than getting continuous alerts from things that don't matter or they don't care about. <laughs> um, so they will start putting those in a special box inbox folder and they will no longer be paying attention to them and then they're going to yell and scream at you because they didn't get their notifications that they needed well they probably did right. it was just lost somewhere in the noise